Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I'm really excited about this Bible study, and I hope you are too. Uh, what a great way to walk through the scriptures, all 47 prophecies of the coming of the Messiah, right? How cool is that? And so um, I'm going to uh, go through them with you, and then I'll leave, it, uh, leave the camera on for a little bit afterwards. So you can go ahead and write down the scriptures if you haven't come down to, to look on the board yet. Um, so I wanted to give you some time. And then if you ever, ever are in dire need of what the notes are, I'm sure you can ask Pat or you can ask, uh, that's Pat Bible or Leanne, uh, either one of them. I'm sure they can get that information to you uh, so you can go ahead and look up these scriptures. So i um, very excited and we're going to take our time and go through these so that you can write it down and uh, join us in this Bible study. All right. So the first one is Isaiah, Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 2 and Luke 4, 18 through 19. Now, what's amazing about this passage as you read, it is something that is, it's promised to all of us and which he has already probably done for you several times, a hundred times over maybe. And so to read it as part of the prophecy of who the Messiah would be, I mean, I mean, in personal experience, check, absolutely true, absolutely true. Okay, so the next one, it's Psalm 110, verse 4, Hebrews 5, verses 5 through 6. Now, this one, as you look at it, it's going to be a little bit tricky because we're, now we're, we're really kind of looking at um, the Old Testament. We're looking at this encounter. But what's really important and why these two are tied together is because of the genealogy, what, what, what was. So who is Jesus? If you go to John chapter 1, we know, verse 1, that he tells us that he was there at the beginning. And so as we tie it to this individual that it, you're going to read about, so seems that these two are interwoven together in thought, in deed, but in person, who they were and who they are. So just take your time reading that. And, and uh, you can even probably go back to Genesis if you'd like, just to kind of uh, reference that encounter uh, between Abraham and this individual. So just, 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 I want you to take your time and read through this uh, because it's very important because there is this link and it's for you to decide and clarify in your reading of the scripture. Okay, so the next one, Psalm 2, 6. And Zechariah 9, verse 9, and Matthew 27, verse 37, Mark 11, 7 through 11. And so we know this to be uh, something that is personified in Revelation, that we would know uh, that who this person is, that this Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God, who is this person? And so we know this to be true because it's already been, been already announced and pronounced. And, and so as you read this scripture, you can also reference that there's just no um, uh, doubt in the world's mind in Revelation who this is because of. And there are titles, Savior, Lord, um, the High Priest, and this personification of the Lord Jesus Christ. So then the next one we have is Zechariah 11, verse 12, and Matthew 21, verses 4 through 5. And in this is kind of interesting because when you go back, as we're entering into the season of Lent, we're going to also uh, have the High Holy Week. And it starts with Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then Easter morning uh, sunrise service. But as you look at the beginning of High Holy Week, Jesus check the box of what was supposed to be because it was prophesied and hence he fulfilled that prophecy. Um, and, and so you will, you can read in that and through that in the scriptures provided and in the gospels as well. All right. So the next one is Psalm eight verse two and Matthew 21 verse 16. And this is amazing because of the simplicity of this point that scripture makes. Because one would think 
part of the reason why the, 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 the people of Israel and the, the holy leaders of Israel, the Sanhedrin, the Sadducees and Pharisees, missed it that Jesus was there, the Messiah, the Son of God, that he was who he said he was and who he was obviously proving who he was and showing who he was. But here you have it. That it wasn't a big parade of people, the Sadducees and the holy leaders and all the kings and, and leaders of the world did not throw confetti or pigeons or whatever doves in celebration. That he was recognized in a humble way. He came in as a lamb, right? He was humbled. He was born in a manger. So there was this sense of humility that we carry in our relationship with Jesus Christ. That we emulate in our relationship with Jesus Christ. And so this reading that you'll have in this passage in Psalm 8 verse 2 and Matthew 21 16. I'm telling you it's just it's going to it's going to just excite you in a way that it is so simple yet profound and powerful. The next thing is Psalm 41 verse 9 and Zechariah 11 verses 12 through 13 Luke Chapter 22, verse 47 through 48, and Matthew 26, 14 through 16. And this had to happen. This had to happen for Scripture to be fulfilled, for the promise to be fulfilled. And so as we think about the mission of Jesus, why he came to this world, why he, he humbled himself to the point that he became flesh, and walked amongst us and experienced all the temptation and all the sin and, and, and carry the sins of the world with him. This had to happen so that he could fulfill that promise. And so when we think about what happened in that moment in his life, in his birth, his life, his death and resurrection, this had to happen. And, 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 and again, take into consideration how it happened and who it happened with and that if we have fully received Jesus Christ then we would not do this but those who have not fully received Jesus Christ they can't help but do this so think about that as you read these scriptures and I, I know you're going to enjoy uh, just gleaning through this, these scriptures here. Now, the, the last one is Zechariah chapter 11, verses 12 through 13, and and uh, and then Matthew 27, verses 9 and 10. And the reason why this is so important is because of God's intimacy, the Lord Jesus Christ's intimacy in our lives to know us, to form us, to be involved in every single part of us, and even the imperfections. He loves and he takes hold of and he uses it all for his glory. And what an amazing thing that is in our lives. So I just want you to be encouraged as you read through these scriptures, as you study the word, as you become stronger in the word of God, more encouraged. I pray that you would just know that you are not alone, but that the Lord is with you and he is with you through his word and through prayer. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much right now for just the opportunity to, to study your word and to take into account all that has happened, all the fulfillment, all 47 prophecies that are fulfilled. Lord, we're only on 28, but Lord, what an amazing, amazing um, lesson this has been, how all has been revealed and how we can continue to see the power of your word and your promises fulfilled. Lord, bless each and every one within my hearing, Lord, and I pray this study will go well with their soul, that it will encourage them, Lord, and remind them that they are not alone. We love you, Lord, and we give you all the honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone says, amen. God bless you.